Sometimes I wonder if we understand Islam as it should be understood. Sometimes it's hard to strengthen our faith amidst all these distractions. Sometimes we're confused about what we want and what our next steps should be. Sometimes you need to take a moment and reflect on what matters most. And because we live in such uncertain times with so much going on around us, I guess sometimes we just gotta sit down and talk about it. So listening to the inspiring stories of converts is, it always has a very deep impact on me. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm really honored to be sitting with three converts to Ahmadiyyat over here today. And I mean, speaking about youth issues, there are so many different perspectives that we have brought to this program. Uh, you know, people who uh, have grown up in Western society, but were born Ahmadi. Um, but I think at the same time, a convert who shares his experiences and his thoughts about a certain thing, um, it always takes on a different perspective because you've lived a lifetime before Ahmadiyyat and then you started to question faith, question you know existence of God and other things. And then you came to the conclusion that you know Jamaat Ahmadiyya was the true Islam and, and was right. So you found beauty in this. And that's something that would really inspire me because I would like to hear about you know, what is it that you found beautiful about Ahmadiyyat? And I think that would be inspiring to youth as well. So, I mean, as converts who have consciously decided to accept Jamaat Ahmadiyya and accept the religion of Islam, I mean, what does Islam mean to you and what does being an Ahmadi Muslim mean to you? You know, I've always felt it was about uh, following a set of rules and codes and some people you know, need that. And I was one of those uh, wild horses that needed a saddle on me. Like I needed something to, you know, direct me a certain way. And uh, just to give you a glimpse of that, uh, one time a friend of my dad was going to tell him that, you know, get your son to leave Islam. And my dad said, you know, I've seen him after he accepted Islam and I saw him before. I would never say anything to make him leave Islam. So my family saw that there was a genuine change. But what I told them the change was is that I found instructions. Like I found a manual. And I'm just trying to follow what's in that book. So it was really easy to have an example and have a book and just be able to like take these two things in. But I, I kind of was looking for someone to look up to, like maybe a big brother or an icon or something. And actually, it was the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Holy Quran that I found like, okay, they simplified it. They made it really easy. And to be honest, I was really happy that our Quran is this thick and not this thick <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, like, the Quran is tangible. You can read it. You know, you can read it in a month. But uh, some other holy books, you know, it takes you, you know, might as well be your lifetime. <laughs> so, so I guess from that perspective, it was easier, yeah, right, to read the Holy Quran. That's nice. I mean, Yusuf, would you like to share something? I mean, like for for me, take for example that I've I was I was born an Ahmadi Muslim. My parents were Ahmadis. My grandparents were Ahmadis. Their grandparents were Ahmadi Muslims. And I grew up my entire life around Ahmadi Muslims, right? So my experience of a certain thing is totally different to, to yours, right? And that's what I'm trying to not compare, but try to extract, you know, the beautiful things about Islam that somebody else might have come to discover that even I don't know, even though I have studied the religion of Islam for, you know, quite a while now. So, I mean, what, what do you find beautiful? You know, I... I mean, I think you've, accur you've accurately depicted it in saying that we've lived two lives before. At least I have. You know, I'll, often, you know, I, I tell to a lot of youth, I was like, to me, it's like I've, I've, I've already lived two lives, all right, in, in this short amount of time. Yeah. Sometimes I even feel tired because of it. I was like, you know, I was like, oh, my God, I'm already working on the second one. Yeah. I'd say one thing that people have to remember with, with my personal experience is the first book I wrote is from the Promised Messiah, Lay Islam. I, the status of the Holy Prophet, the status of the Holy Quran, right? I recognize these because he said these were the highest status. He said, there's no prophet has a higher status than this prophet. I, the first book I wrote was Philosophy and Teachings of Islam, but I read a, a number of books before I converted. I, I spent almost about a year doing research. Mm -hmm. And I really resonated with a couple of ideas. One was like that there was a real world value to morality 
right? You, from my background, generally when I asked why we could, they'd be like, you can't do that. And I was like, well, why not? And they're like, the Bible said so. And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, why do I have to follow that book? And I was like, well, it's the word of God. And I was like, well, how do you know? And they're like, eyewitness account. And I was like, uh. I was like, how do you know for sure, right? And they're like, you'll find out when you're dead. And I was like, you find out when you're dead. And I was like, this life seems pretty short and I'm going to try to make the most of it while I'm here. And, but he gave an idea, he goes, whether, well, one of the ideas, my favorite, he said, whether this is real or not, right? He goes, all of these things are good for you right now. Minus heaven or hell, minus whether or not there is a divine being or not. He's like, you know, we shouldn't be drinking because it's, it's physically bad for us. It is literally poison. We're poisoning our brain and our body and our livers, right? And, you know, and it was the, these foods. He's like, you shouldn't eat bad foods. You know, pork was one of the ones he's listed. But he's right. And, like, we shouldn't eat bad foods in general. They do affect us. They make us what we are. Right. And then the next thing he said, he goes, you can never believe in God until you experience God, really experience God. And he goes, let me tell you what it means to experience God. He goes, these are the signs because your dreams are going to change. You might you might even see the future in your dreams. You know what I mean? He talked about revelation, right? Intuition, acceptance of prayer and a special type of acceptance of prayer that I think only a person that's really experienced it can really kind of say what that water tastes like. So I accepted Islam because of the Promise of Silas Islam. So people are always kind of like, why Ahmadi? And I was like, because he's the one that, you know, Promise of Silas Islam was really the one that introduced me to Islam. I really, I guess I vibrated with his message, right? Like I, it resonated with me. And I was like, okay. Then I made a proper investigation. And then I read the Holy Quran. Then I started reading Hadith, right? But it was actually his literature first. So how, how long ago did you convert? Oh my God, uh, March 2009. So we're coming up on a, on a, on a decade yeah. in March, inshallah, yeah, sure. inshallah. And, and Adam Bey yourself, you converted? Uh, Ten years this year. Ten years, mashallah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Fidel, how long did, ago did you convert? I converted almost three years ago. Okay, three it's years gonna be three years, years in February. Okay, mm -hmm. mashallah. And I mean, what what sort of led you to Ahmadiyya then to finally accept? Um, when I began looking into different religions, it was more because I felt like I had gone astray. And I wanted to to reconnect with God, so I, I would attend um, church because that was the only life I knew, right? So when I started to attend church, I saw a lot of joy in people's eyes that I just didn't have that same mm. same uh, yeah. connection. So the end thing is like I didn't I, like I, there was a part of me that felt like this wasn't it wasn't for me, like it was just something I could not follow. So I felt kind of like left out because whenever I questioned things, people would label me as an atheist and I wasn't an atheist. I believed in God, but I just, I was just something I couldn't, I couldn't follow. So um, from there, like I started looking into um, um, different beliefs and um, it was a long journey. Um, I, the moment when I found Islam, like I knew it answered like every question that I had that for the past, for my whole life, it was always more of a, a, like the response that I would get was more like, you have to have faith. Like this is God testing you. And it just never se seemed plausible to me that that could be the answer to everything. So when I started uh, looking into Islam, a lot of the questions that I had, it had a more intricate uh, response. And it was just something that it finally just, when I read it, I was just like, yeah, that, yeah, yes. Mm. So, like, for me to convert to Islam, it was, just, it was just, it was one of the blessings that, it was one of the greatest blessings that I have ever had uh, Masha, given to me. Masha, I mean, for, you know, on, the, on this program, we've discussed a lot of topics on how to get youth more active doing tabligh, uh, what does it actually mean to be an Ahmadi Muslim, why we should stay away from social evils and social vices, and I mean, for you to just hear a story like this, how somebody else who was not a Muslim, not an Ahmadi Muslim, knew nothing about the Prophet Messiah, for him to sit back and just say, yes, I mean, this is it. I mean, that's something for people who are born Ahmadi Muslims, something that we've inherited, something that we already have. Mm -hmm. So I think like for, for me, at least, um, as like among those Ahmadi Muslim youth who are, who are listening to inspiring stories like this, at least for me, you know, it makes me it makes me proud of my Muslim identity and Ahmadi Muslim identity. Mm -hmm. And it makes me appreciate Jamaat Ahmadiyya more, right? Knowing that, you know, somebody else found this to be that path that they were always looking for for, for their entire life. Mm -hmm.
So, I mean, after, after conversion, I know uh, there, I, I can only imagine some of the challenges that somebody would face after, you know, it's such a huge step to take in one's life. Um, so what were some of the challenges that you as a convert faced? Well, I have to say that uh, by the grace of Allah, uh, he accepted my first prayer. That was that, please don't let anybody in my family give me a hard time about this. So Alhamdulillah, there is not a single family member, cousin, aunt, uncle that has any problem with being Muslim and they're very happy. But all the friends, every single friend, I lost. And it was because I didn't want to talk about anything other than Islam anymore. <laughs> and, the, you know, I became like that person who's like obsessed with NASCAR. I just talked about NASCAR all the time. Like it was just, if somebody said, the weather's nice. I said, oh, you know, in the Quran, it says, you know, and somebody says something about anything. I just, right. Quran. And so I became kind of annoying maybe. Mm. And so all my friends just thought, you know, you changed before you were always trying to like break the law or like do bad stuff. And now you're just talking about this book. And I realized that I was going in the same direction with them. And then I got off and went a different way. And they kept going. And I was no longer, you know, in the same direction as them. But I turned towards a new group of friends mm -hmm. and, you know, people who have the same interests and we're all obsessed with Islam. So it's like, you know, I enjoy sitting in the company of us and listening to somebody be just as excited about talking about Islam as I am. But unfortunately, I, I lost that with like everybody I went to high school with, everybody I went to college with. They just disappeared because I made a life decision. And I mean, now you're pursuing your passion in Islam by doing Islamic studies and you'll be... Um, becoming a missionary, inshallah. So inshallah. you're studying now, mm -hmm. mashallah. So I had, you know, I know the feeling. I had to give up all my old friends. It was so hard. I think that's that's something that people will never understand. Like, you know, we talk about sacrificing that brown cow. Like that's hard. That was one of the hard ones, right? It was uh, especially, I guess, like culturally, right? I know, like, family is important, but like friends are also a bit. They're like they were like an, we called each other family. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of the same thing for me, I guess, like I wanted to talk about God and that was like, it was like a no, no type thing, you know? And also I think people didn't want for me to change. Mm. They wanted, they, they kind of put me, they typecast me and said, I, we want you to be this person. And when I wanted to start evolving and moving out of that, that typecast, they didn't like it. Mm. Right. And, but you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to make like that, that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that I think those people, I don't know, I think they're still moving along. Right. It's just the path that we've taken. We're moving faster. Mm. Right. Like there's a, there's a lot of ground that has to be covered. And I think this is promise of Salah Salam said it's not these other people aren't making growth in themselves, but they're not with the amount of growth that needs to take place. It's not fast enough. Mm. Right. Religion's like a it's like a vehicle that gets us to another place. And this is the Ferrari. This guy is getting us, it's the fastest, it's the mm -hmm. fastest, it is Ihid then al right? They, they'll get to these points, right? They're going to realize there's a God. They're going to realize that drugs and alcohol are not good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Dating ends in heartbreak, right? And these people jaded, right? But it's going to take them a lot longer to get there, right? And by following these rules, we can expedite that journey. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Fidel, you're relatively newer to Ahmadiyat than Adam and Yusuf, right? Yeah, so, I'm still in the process of... Uh, what they're going through but initially when i did convert and i told them they were all like oh like good luck with that or you know some just went a completely different way for me um, they wanted someone who continued to drink um, they wanted someone who was going to eat pork for some reason and the thing is like i would ex for me i it's it's very difficult to deal with especially because you do feel alone. Again, I do have the Jamaat, so I'm really happy for that and grateful for that. But uh, like going back to like, because I live further out from here, so I want to move closer so I can have this as a daily lifestyle. But in my area where uh, people are just like leaving and they're like, they don't understand, like I, I, uh, I kind of preach before they leave and not in a sense where I'm just like, you know, like this is like the truth. Like I just tell them the way that Islam should be preached that you know, this is why I'm quitting all of this. And it's not for something illogical. It's just is beneficial for you or for myself anyway. Mm -hmm. And they kind of, they always, the thing is when I meet, um, when I meet people, they have all of these difficult, like these difficult questions that they think, you know, like no one could ever answer. 
you know, um, the other day I met a man from, from Turkey and he asked me, because he saw my ring, my, my, uh, and he's like, what does that mean? And I'm like, oh, it means like, is Allah not sufficient for his servant? And he's, he was baffled because he's like, aren't you Latino? I'm like, yeah. He's like, where does the influence come from? And that kind of like, I didn't realize what exactly he was, he was asking until I thought about it. And the thing is like with most worlds, they think that Islam is like forced on you. They think that religion is forced on you. So the fact that he's meeting someone where my response was, I converted personally. Yeah. And he's like, what about the rest of Latin America? I'm like, we have a lot of mosques. You know, like I want to go visit Guatemala because we have a, a beautiful mosque there. Yeah. And he's like, but where did the influence come from? And I'm like, you know, for me personally, I converted. And for Latin America, we just have missionaries who go and they they preach the, two, the true teachings of Islam. And they themselves accept it. And once they do accept it, like we will build a mosque there so that they have somewhere to, to pray. And he's just like, yeah, but aren't they like more like, like religious, like Christians or Catholics? And I'm just there saying, you know, a lot of people personally, like, I just feel like they, they are so misguided that they don't believe it in themselves anymore. Mm -hmm. So they, they kind of lose path of what is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the, tr like the true path to God. So it's kind of, uh, it's our job to go there and to teach them the true teachings of Islam and, and God so that way they can be guided to true I think that's so beauty. beautiful because just, just some of the things you said and how you guys narrated how you lost friends. You know, we were speaking about youth whose social circles influence them. We were speaking about, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to leave your circle of friends, especially if when it's guys you've known for your entire life. And we were speaking about this from the perspective of you know, can you really say that to a young Khadim who may be involved in different social issues and maybe indulging in those issues that, you know, abandon your friends, right? But I guess, like, this, this is really inspiring because when you accepted Ahmadiyyat, you lost friends, you lost your social circles, and there was a lot of challenges from your family as well. So I think that's, I think for, for me as, you know, an Ahmadi Muslim Khadim, somebody who's born into it, that speaks a lot to me. I mean, like if converts went through that, then that shows me that I need to discover Ahmadiyyat as well. And in the process of me discovering Ahmadiyyat, even though I've been born into it, I'm going to lose friends along the way. And maybe even some of my family members, maybe, you know, who were indulging in certain things and bringing me to those things, maybe I'm going to have to lose them as well, right? Mm -hmm. But for, for, for converts, I mean, there, there may be other converts who are going through these same issues. How did how did you cope and how do you cope? And you know you were speaking earlier like is it is it getting better? What's what's going on? Like is there hope? Like what can we say to a convert who's watching this and who may be going through the same thing that you know Adam you went through ten years ago, Yusuf you went through ten years ago, and Fidel you're going through currently. And you know? I guess uh, something I just noticed like just a second ago is you know we're all wearing a ring that says Allah is sufficient. Yeah. You know. We're wearing that as a reminder, <laughs> you know, like just to get through this, sometimes we need a reminder and it helps every once in a while that, you know, you touch your ring and then you look at it and then you think of the time that this was said to the Prophet Muhammad in a time where he was in desperate need and he felt like he was losing everything. Allah said to him, is not Allah sufficient for his servant? So in these times, we do have to get a reminder. So I suggest a ring, but... Uh, it, we need to go and attract ourselves to somebody who's also maybe going through that time. Um, you know, and outside of this organization, there's an organization called Big Brother, where they usually pair you up. Yeah. You know, sometimes come up to us, you know, come up to me and say, do you mind if we hang out sometime? There is nothing that I have to do in a day except for help my brothers around me. Yeah. So if somebody wants to hang out or, you know, ask me how I got through it, I'll tell them and I'll be there for them. But I got to tell them that some parts you'll have to do on your own and it will be hard mm -hmm. but you go places you know the best things in life are the things you have to work hard for so i think that you need a reminder and you need to be around somebody who's been reminded i, I agree with you I, I feel like there is a point when uh, every khadim is gonna have to decide right or, or our legendary members as well if this is the truth mm -hmm. 
right? And in that moment, th there is a conversion, right? Or, or maybe like we could say like a shift, yeah. right? A change takes yeah. place. In that moment, you're like, this is the truth. And everybody's going to have to go through it. Otherwise, to a certain extent, it's, it's a culture. Right. Even I would, you know, with religion, right, we say there's a difference between religion and culture. But if we were practicing a religion and we don't understand what the wisdom is behind it and why we're doing it, there's a level of culture to it. Right. It, it means nothing to say I love if we don't ponder what the depths or at least try oh, yeah. to attempt to yeah. ponder the depths of Allah. And I think that. Um, there's a chance to make a proper investigation. Yeah. Right. And to look into everybody should make a decision if this is true or not. Right. You know, we were speaking earlier, um, you know, when looking at Hazrat Muslim Maud you know, he, he, was, he was the second Khalifa of the Promised Messiah, and there even came a time when even he said, you know, did I accept Ahmadiyyat because my father is the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, or did I accept Ahmadiyyat because Ahmadiyyat is the truth, mm -hmm. and because my father was sent by God? And he said that, you know, I'm going to evaluate by myself, and if I find it to be true, then I'm going to accept it fully with my, with my heart. And if I find out that it's wrong through my research, then I'm going to run away from home. Mm -hmm. And so even Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud did this. And I think that's something that's very necessary for all youth to do is that, you know, we have converts who went through this process, but a lot of the born Ahmadis have not gone through this process. And like the conclusions that you have come to and finding the beauty in Islam, that's sort of the, some, some of the things that we've missed out on by not evaluating it from this perspective as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if we do begin to evaluate it, then we only come up with more and more beauties that we become more proud of. And then we want to speak to other people about those things. Mm -hmm. So from the, I mean, convert perspective, I'm going to speak more about, like, let's say you were speaking as a convert to youth who were struggling with social vices mm. what kind of advice would you give you know one thing i would say are we speaking specifically mostly about drugs and alcohol right yeah. would be the, one of the sure. major yeah. major ones that we're, we're suffering from if somebody's using drugs or alcohol they should realize something's wrong yeah. right they're medicating a situation either they're not at peace they're feeling internal conflict right they're not happy one thing i'd say is they don't like the company they're keeping Right. Whenever we have to drink, what, one of the things that I always tell people quickly once they quit drinking is that they're going to realize they don't like a lot of their friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're they're going to be like, whoa, all we had in common right, is drinking together. And now I really don't enjoy you. <laughs> right. So another thing I'd say is they're not enjoying their company. They need to really take a look at who they're hanging out with mm -hmm. and also why they're not happy. What's wrong? What's missing from their life? What's not in alignment? Right. And I think a lot of youth use ignorance as a shield. They say, if I don't read these books, I'm not going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Right. One out to one. Ignorance is not a shield. It is not going to work. Right. Pleading ignorance on that day. That day's coming no matter what. Right. And especially if God's made the decision very easy and put all of the knowledge right at the footstep. Right. The accountability is even twice as high. Right. And, and secondly, I'd say that they're going to feel better once they understand the things that they find disagreeable trust me Allah and his messenger find them disagreeable as well mm -hmm. and they're going to once they have that knowledge they're going to have the tools they need to find that happiness right and a lot of times what's missing right is the truth right because we're here right to i guess to like self-actualize and figure out the purpose of our creation right and that's like recognizing our creator Right, and these are the tools and how to do it. And then their life's gonna have purpose, yeah. right? Anything that you would like to add to that? Uh, yeah, if, for me, one thing I never noticed until after was look at who you're surrounding yourselves around, okay? These people that are telling you, oh, like, you know, come out, have fun, like drink and smoke and do all this, ask, ask yourself, why are they asking you to come out? You know, they they feel alone. And why do they feel alone? If you look at their decisions, they'll they'll say to you, you know, uh, like I believe in God, but I just don't know if this religion is for me, right? So they'll believe in God and they'll live their lives saying that God is 
punishing me like I'm a good person yeah you're a good person but look at the actions that you're doing mm -hmm. you're telling people to come and smoke with you to come do like all of uh, drinking with you it's like why and then they do bad deeds that they don't realize are bad deeds because they're misguided and they want you to come join them so that they don't feel alone and that you walk down this path you know we as Ahmadi Alhamdulillah we have so much resource to see why everything why we shouldn't smoke why we shouldn't drink why we shouldn't do certain stuff and it's because eventually like this is what they're missing this is what they are they're looking for and they don't they're not gonna ever the, for the most part they won't feel the energy or uh, the motivation to go out and look for what you have at your disposal you just don't realize it because they're your friends mm -hmm. but you have to kind of ask yourself why and you'll see you'll get the answers I don't know any closing remarks or anything to add well, the I, final moments I definitely uh, think that you know we're an example of there's other people to chill with yeah. than uh, these people because uh, <laughs> I know that there were some times that uh, I didn't want to be with those people but I was just doing it you know doing what they were doing but when I found a different group of people who didn't need those things and that we could go places travel the world together do exciting things together I was very relieved that that option was there and you know for us we have Kudam Ahmadiyya and once these youth wake up and start realizing and appreciating Kudam Ahmadiyya what it has to offer the trips the retreats the ishtamas all these things this is the way out of that that uh, lifestyle of vices you know but if you don't come to these you know it's not coming to you you have to kind of meet us you have to leave your group and we're there waiting and I tell you that uh, my brother, he really enjoyed uh, the Ishtamas in that sense that meeting all these people who are keeping away from the same thing, you know, it's really helpful to hear. And especially if somebody went through some trial, you're like, okay, I'm not the only one suffering with some type of uh, addiction or anything like that. But, you know, there's a better group out there. Subhat yeah. Salihin, yeah. find the righteous yeah. people. And You know, we really enjoy when Adam Bay comes, comes down to MTA and you know, shares his wisdom with us. You know, I'm always looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. You know, one, one thing that really inspired me, made me question something that, you know, I was speaking to Adam recently and, you know, he was saying that, you know, when he goes to the mosque, some, some youth come up to him and ask him, you know, what's the, what's the strongest proof for the existence of God that you know? Because he's a convert and, you know, he, like, he knows these arguments. And like, like he came back and said, you know, we're Ahmadi Muslims. We're far beyond the existence of God like this is such a basic level thing it should be a basic level thing for us that we should be far beyond this and that's why I think um, you know I hope um, converts keep sharing their experiences with you know the rest of Jamaat it's really inspiring and Jazakallah for sharing uh, your experiences today I was really inspired by it and I know for a fact that viewers and youth will be inspired by these stories as well Jazakallah for your time Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh no ne hala ne jamaat mujhe kuch kehna hai par hai ye shart ke zaye mera pe